A day of reckoning for a wealthy, well-connected, alleged child predator. Jeffrey Epstein today pleading not guilty after federal prosecutors in New York revealed many disturbing details of how the politically connected multimillionaire allegedly operated a sex trafficking ring and sexually abused dozens of underage girls among the evidence presented in court today. The discovery in a safe in Epstein's Upper East Side mansion of CDs containing, quote, nude or partially nude photographs that appear to be of underage girls with handwritten labels describing the CD's contents as young name plus name or girl pics nude. Say the prosecutors of Epstein, he is not reformed, chastened, or repentant. He is a continuing danger to the community. The general accusations that the multimillionaire has preyed against girls have swirled around Epstein for years, though he has avoided any serious punishment. Epstein previously avoided similar charges by securing a secret deal for a much lesser offense with prosecutors back in Florida in 2008, led by then U.S. Attorney, now U.S. Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta. The Miami Herald last year detailed how Acosta gave Epstein what they called the, quote, deal of a lifetime, allowing the man connected to both Donald Trump and Bill Clinton to avoid spe spending the rest of his life in jail. For years of preying on vulnerable girls, some allegedly as young as 14, while allegedly getting them to recruit other girls. All the while, he allegedly trafficked the victims for the purposes of rape, sexual abuse by him and others, according to his accuser. Elliot, you heard the defense attorneys for Epstein calling this indictment a, quote, do-over of the, quote, very stuff that was investigated by the feds in Florida. So explain, is there a double jeopardy issue here? How can the Southern District of New York charge Epstein if he reached a non-prosecution deal with different federal prosecutors in Florida? Well, yeah, the New York prosecutors were very, if you read the indictment carefully, they were very careful in the facts they alleged. They laid out conduct that happened in New York and they charged sex trafficking there and a conspiracy that touched conduct in Florida, which will pull in evidence of the past conduct. So they were actually very careful in trying to insulate themselves against this very charge. You could have anticipated that they would have made this do-over argument, but it's actually quite a weak one because prosecutors' offices, when they strike these agreements, very, quite often, often make clear that uh, you know future or other prosecutors offices can still bring other charges they don't preclude other offices from doing so so this is a man accused of of horrible unconscionable crimes against dozens of young girls are you surprised that this specific case is as of now just one charge of trafficking and one charge of conspiracy to traffic well again future uh, uh, charges can be brought we know that there were uh, photographs and other evidence seized today. And we also don't know what else was found in his house today. Certainly the prosecutors and the FBI knew that they had uh, probable cause believe there was actionable evidence in his house. So who knows what comes of that? Often that initial indictment is just one charge. And I want to be clear, this is one charge, uh, you know, if it's those, frankly, the two charges, which carries, I think, up to a 45-year maximum. Uh, so he could potentially still be looking at a tremendous amount of time in prison. But again, more charges could still be added, more people could still be charged. So we'll just have to wait and see what else comes from that search warrant. Well, the FBI, as you, as you noted, they, they urged any other potential victims to call them. The U.S. Attorney's Office say they have been contacted uh, by people who allege they've been victims of Epstein uh, just in the last day and a half or so. Is that common to announce charges like this and then ask for the public's help and then you build even more charges? It's cer it's, <laughs> this isn't a very common case. You just don't see circumstances where someone, uh, where the, egregious, the conduct is so egregious, but the deal is so sweetheart, which you know, sort of seems to stem from his high, high profile status in society or whatever. So that's not very common, but again, uh, this case isn't very common. So we'll, again, we'll just have to see how it plays out. All right, Ellie, thank you so much. Let's chew over all this uh, with our panel right here. Now, the New York Times has reported that Bill Clinton uh, rode on Epstein's plane dozens of times and reportedly visited Epstein's private island. Uh, Christine Pelosi, one of the daughters of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi tweeted, quote, it is quite likely that some of our faves are implicated. She, she urged the people to, to support uh, the case no matter where's, where it goes. Um, is there serious concern that there will be politicians that, whose names we know uh, that will that will emerge in, in this case? Well, I mean, in Bill Clinton's case, it's already emerged because he's on the flight manifest, the actual written flight manifest that came out a few years ago. So his, his role, what we don't know what the role was, 
but it absolutely <laughs> is possible. And, um, you know, it, it, as um, Christine Pelosi said, it, it, this isn't one of these things. It's important not to take political sides on this. These are young girls who are essentially thrown away by Florida prosecutors uh, or federal prosecutors a couple years ago when they gave him that sweetheart deal. Do you think Acosta's in trouble? It's hard to tell. The president seems to still show support for him. We, we've heard the president. We asked him a couple questions yesterday on the tarmac in New Jersey about this, and he basically is taking a hands-off approach, saying, I know nothing about this. This was a long time ago. But when it comes to members of Congress and people who have the power to sort of investigate this and show some oversight, it does seem like uh, Acosta will be on the hot seat because his role in this case, you know, almost a decade ago, looks much worse now that we have new federal prosecutors coming in and behind him and seeming to kind of clean up after him and doing what he was not able to do in Florida. And the conduct that is described in these indictments is pretty uh, outrageous. And it's some of the same conduct that, uh, that Mr. Acosta was dealing with back in 2008. So he's going to be under a lot of pressure from Congress in, in this front. And of course, there's the horrible quote from, in retrospect, the horrible quote from uh, Donald Trump back in 2002 saying that, uh, that Epstein likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger yeah. side, of yeah. course. He said that in 2002 before there were any charges known. But it suggests that he knows something's kind of sketchy about him. I, so, I, I mean, maybe he could say he didn't know that they were quite this young, but, you know, I don't know what he, what he was referencing. I'll leave it to him to tell us what he was referencing in that, in that quote. Um, and it's the same thing with Bill Clinton. I think Bill Clinton will, will probably come back and say, well, I had no idea. I was just friends with him, and I just flew on a plane with him 12 times. Um, and I, I think, or was it 26 times? <laughs> okay, yeah, so 26 times. So it's a little unbelievable and it, that you wouldn't be aware of this, and I think it's something that was, uh, you know, I wouldn't quite call it an open secret, but it, certainly there was a lot of questions around Jeffrey Epstein and, and what he was doing. And so I think that, um, and you certainly know that there was a case against him at one point. Wouldn't that raise some questions when you want to ask some questions about it? Yeah. I mean, I'm learning slowly just when I think that politics can't get any more cartoonishly disgusting to just, just up the ante a little bit, just expect that it will get worse. Um, but look, there is a political element to this, which is that, yes, for years, it was somewhat, this uh, plea deal was something of an outrage on the right and sort of on the, in the online community because of this connection to Bill Clinton. And now that it's emerged that Acosta, or we knew it was Acosta at the time, but because he's now tied to the Trump administration, it will be interesting to see who flips, uh, as Christine Pelosi suggests we should not, and we shouldn't, flips their allegiances and, and who they think should get in trouble over this because now that he has some connection to Trump. But it's just mind-blowing.